welcome to Linda's Corner. My name is Linda Bjork, and today we're going to be talking about overcoming loneliness by creating better friendships. I'm delighted to welcome special guest, Coach Lee Hopkins. Coach Lee is a friendship and transformational coach and the founder of Patterns of Possibility. You can reach Coach Lee at his website, PatternsofPossibility.com, and I'll include a link in the show notes. Welcome, Coach Lee. I'm so glad that you could join with me today. Thank you for having me, Linda. I'm so glad to be able to join you as well. This is going to be wonderful. I am looking forward to learning from you today. And I watched your video about why can't I make friendships? Three social myths that prevent me from making lasting friendships. Is it okay if we start there and you kind of explain what these social myths are and why they prevent us from developing friendships? We want friends. And so what's keeping us from having these friendships? Sure, absolutely. So we definitely want friends. And one of the biggest things I discovered about finding friendships is that we are always hiding something. So there's the core of it. At the core of it, there is something that we we are hiding from another person. And we think that if we reveal that to another person, if we reveal that, they're not going to like us. So that is one of the things that prevents us from developing friendships and closeness to people. So the three social myths First, I really appreciate that you watched it, and I appreciate that you you are you want to bring this up as the first most important because the first one of the three social myths is to never cause friction. So, never causing friction is something that I learned growing up, where I thought that I needed to be the person that I thought they wanted me to be. So, whatever circle I was in, I can't be my authentic self. I have to hide. I have to hide that. And if I did show them, I won't like, they won't like me. So never cause friction in that way. And then the second one is I'll be rejected. And the rejection will be the worst thing in the world. Well, it won't be. That's a myth. It won't be the worst thing in the world. Rejection is a part of life. And it's not anything personal. It has nothing to do with me. It's all about how the other person felt, feels. And learning that is why I became a coach, helping that, helping other people understand that point is why I became a coach. And then finally, you must win them over. That's the final myth. You don't have to win anyone over. What you must do to make genuine friendships is be yourself. Come into these spaces and don't be afraid to, to share whatever it is that you're hiding with other people. And understand that sometimes in different situations, it's not safe. But as part of my story, if I could share with you. Absolutely. I was was always hiding something. I grew up in a small town and I like artwork and I I expressed that. And people were like, well, no, you're never going to make any money with that. Don't do anything like that. I'm like, well, I just shouldn't, should not tell anybody anything ever again. And so I, I moved to college went to college and kind of had that same fear. There was something about me. I don't know what it is. There's something about me that these people are not going to like. And I carry that with me. So I moved from here to, moved from Ohio to California. And I had myself in the, the karaoke and I enjoyed the people there. I had a great time with them. But there was something, something I was hiding. I just had to figure out something, to find something to hide from them to decide that they were not going to like me if I, if I shared that with them. It's just something a theme throughout my entire life. And isn't it amazing what happens when we learn to like and accept ourselves? And I think it is mm-hmm. actually rather magical. And it's interesting, if we follow these social myths and we're trying to be what someone else expects me to be, because if they see the real me, they're not going to like me. Then what that means is that my friendship is never going to be genuine because I have to be this chameleon and I have to look like what Lee wants me to look like in order for Lee to like me. And I'm going to have to look like this in order for this person to like me. And I have had friends that I have seen walk from group to group in a social situation and change uh, their posture and their word choice and other things. It's like, oh, when I am with this group, I have to talk like this. And when I am with this group, I have to look and act like this. And when you're done and you watch them, you think, wow, who are you? (laughs) You know, who who is the real you? What is you? So as we learn how to really like and appreciate ourselves, 
Then if I can be the real me and then I can have a conversation with you and you like the real me, then all of a sudden it, this friendship is going to be genuine. And isn't that wonderful? Yes, it is so wonderful. And that just, I laughed so much at that because it reminded me of me. It's like you were definitely reflecting about, reflecting exactly what I used to do. I, I just tried my best to be what I thought that they wanted to be, wanted me to be. And it, it turns out that not only do I have my, I don't have my own sense of identity, but I'm just not a person that they can really rely on. And I don't really trust them either because I, I didn't really think that they knew what they wanted. I have to show them what I think they want, if that makes sense. Wow. Isn't that interesting? And when you put it into that perspective, it's not only me being disingenuous, but it also reflects of what I think about you, that you yes. are going to be shallow enough that you're not actually going to like the real me. Yes. You know, you're not going to be able to accept whatever that is. And isn't it interesting? There is also this kind of law of attraction where if we are sending out these vibes of, you know, people don't really like the real me, we end up attracting people who don't like the real me <laughs> in our lives. It's like, see, I told you I was right. And I have a friend who put it this way. He said, you know what? Whatever message we send out into the universe, the universe responds with, that's true. Here's some more evidence to support that. And so if we can switch things around and like ourselves first, magical things happen. And that's one of the things you talk about is how we need to learn how to be friends with ourselves. So what, what does that mean to you? And how do we do it? Yes. Uh, well, that's a great question because I'm going to tell you boundaries. Boundaries is how we do it. And that's such a buzzword because I know when I was in my 20s, I'm in my uh, 30s now, late, late 30s. So when I was in my 20s, I always heard that boundaries meant setting no, saying no and setting limits to what you want and what you will do and what. That, okay, yeah, you can use boundaries that way. But I'd like to reframe that for us and say that boundaries are more so about saying yes to ourselves rather than saying no to anything else. And I want to reframe it that way because you can really understand rejection when you understand what boundaries are about. When you say you understand what your likes and your needs and your wants are, then you can understand completely why somebody else would walk away from you when they're not interested in you. It has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with them saying yes to themselves. So when you say yes to yourself, you can get into the habit of understanding that yes is most important because that's how you're going to create connections with other people. You're going to be authentic with yourself. You're going to be uncompromising because you know that your happiness in any kind of friendship is most important because your happiness is going to be less draining. It's going to be, um, you're going to have more energy to share with other people, you're not going to have to carry the load of like making up what you think they think of you and then turning into that person. You're just going to be relaxed in your authentic self when you say yes to yourself. And finally, when you say yes to yourself, the people who are attracted to you, you will know that they genuinely say yes to themselves too. Lots of yeses. That seems yes. <laughs> much more positive. That's very interesting. I have never heard it framed in those terms before. That's quite lovely. Well, thank you. Thank you. And so the, you also to, to get to that when you're saying yes to yourself, because I know it's really quite an experience. I, I, in my late thirties and I was bumbling around trying to figure out exactly what it means to say yes to myself. Well, to take the abstractness out of creating boundaries because boundaries are just ex they're experiences that we have. They're an emotional reaction to an experience. We we'll walk around in the world and we, boom, we have an event or an invite or an event or something happens and we have an emotional experience. And then we log that experience into our minds, our body. We log that experience and we decide unconsciously whether we need this experience. We loved it. We want to have it again. We can negotiate having it in our lives. Maybe it's so not, or maybe we can. And then we never want to have it in our lives. So I call those your needs negotiables and your nevers. These are experiences that you've had an emotional reaction to. Now, most of the time it comes unconsciously. What I help my clients do is realize that it's a conscious effort 
to think about what you've had, what your experience was, so you're not recreating it over and over and over again. So that's how we kind of make boundaries less abstract and say yes to yourself. Yes, this is a need. Yes, this is a never to me. Like, I never want this to happen. Yes, categorize in, in that way. That's wonderful. And now, does this go along with the beat thing, the beliefs, the emotions, the yes. is it actions and the thoughts? Did I get those right? Or? Yes, you did. You okay. Did. And I rarely talk about that. And I'm so glad that you brought that up because uh, it's the kind of mechanism behind it. Because I know that it's really difficult for me and, and for most people to figure out what the belief is behind it that's driving the behavior that you need to have in your life or that you never want to have in your life. But you can see that with your emotions and your actions. So the beliefs, emotions, actions, and thoughts, they're all tied together. So you have your belief, which is the thing that's stuck in the back of your head, the things that were told to you when you were a kid, things that you're acting on that you're really not sure where they come from. They're back there and analyzing them is, is where we make a lot of change. But your belief about something drives your feeling about it. So if you feel like happy, if you feel joy about this experience, then you're likely going to want to do it again. That's the action. You're going to want to do it again. And your thought about that is always how you will benefit, what benefits you will gain from the experience. I, I took um, this beat, I created it from Robert Plutchik. He was a um, motivational psychologist and he mapped out exactly what your feelings and actions and, and thoughts will kind of be when you have uh, when you have a feeling. So I don't know if you've heard of Plutchik's Wheel of Emotions, mm -mm. but it is based on on that and its experiences where if you feel surprised, for example, then I kind of grab this and pull it up in front of me here. So uh, let's say let's take an emotion and he mapped out eight basic emotions, uh, joy, trust, fear, surprise, sadness, disgust, anger, and anticipation. So what I've done is I've taken them and you have a, I put them into the beat. So if you have a, a situation in which one of your five senses gives you a belief or gives you an impression that let's say, uh, this is unexpected. The belief is you have a situation, you've run into a boundary. This is unexpected. You'll have an emotion surprise and your action will be a stop. Analyze the situation. And the thought, how you will benefit is that you'll get focus. So I ask people and my, my clients to, we usually look at things like um, anger and fear enjoy because those are most easily identifiable. So if we're looking at joy, I feel joy. Great. Your action is to keep the item or intentionally recreate the situation because you feel joy. And the thought is you will have resources. The belief that's really stuck behind that is something valuable is here. And the valuable thing, whatever that is, it's hard to kind of pull out. So let me pull this back into coaching and less more the ideology and, and, and apply this to why we hide. So it might not feel joy to hide, <laughs> but I was certainly happy to be someone else in, in the situation because I thought that they would still, I would have resources in the fact that they would be my friends. That's the thought, they would be my friends. And it's valuable to have people around me, period. I don't care if they really know me. It's just so valuable to have people around me. So the belief, the, the emotion is joy. Like, I'm happy to have these friends around me. My action is to keep being a chameleon. My thought is that I will have these friends around me. And the overall belief is that I don't care who's around me. I want people around me. And so being able to analyze and understand what that is, or what that belief is will help me shift it. So we're looking at, so you don't under, you don't really care if people around you understand you? Mm, let's dive into that. Do you really, where does that come from? What if we tried something different to see how it is? Because joy, you may feel joy, but 
there are also other emotions that that have come into play as well. Mm, and what are the other emotions? Because this is interesting. You're taking something and going through that process and saying, this is why I'm doing what I'm doing because it is satisfying a need. It is matching my beliefs. But what I'm doing uh, is also a self-sabotaging behavior. Yes. And so we, it, we need to recognize what is and then also what is wrong with this picture and, and is there a better way to meet this need? Absolutely. Absolutely. And so we, we reflect on past experiences to see how you really feel about those past experiences and map them over to our current experiences. So we would try an experiment. I would experiment. I would ask them to experiment rather to try something new to see if we can get a different feeling. So, but you asked if uh, there's another emotion that comes along. Mm -hmm. And I think that what I point out is that there's a absence of one emotion which is trust there is no trust there okay. because if you trust if you trust the belief is that you belong here your emotion is to feel trust your action is to become acquainted that means opening up and your thought is that you'll be supported if you are not in a situation where you're becoming acquainted with people the thought is likely that you're not going to feel supported. And that's what friendship is. Belief is that you don't belong here. Where is that coming from? Right. So we would, we would dive into that. So then you believe that you don't belong here because if you reveal X, Y, Z about yourself, they're going to hate you. We're going to reveal X, Y, Z about yourself to them. See what happens then. We're going to do something like a design experiment. We're not going to throw them way in the deep end like that, but we're going to talk about that and see what happens because right now all of that is just the belief in your head. It's the absence of trust. You might feel joy, but you don't really. There's something else missing and there's fear underneath. Too. That's what so, I was going to say. There's some fear and maybe even some shame involved in who I really am is not good enough. So mm -hmm. there's some of that going on. Now, as, as you're describing Definitely. this uh, social experiment, I'm thinking, that takes a lot of courage to be vulnerable, to say, hey, you figure that if you're going to share this, they're all going to reject you. So go ahead and share it and see what happens. And chances are, you know, <laughs> depending on who you have attracted and who you are associating with, they may reject the you. The universe is going to say you're right. The universe is going to say you're right. So it depends. Uh, we need to somehow create a safe place. So there's this, I'm trying to figure out who I am. I'm trying to figure out how to do this. I need to attract actual, safe, genuine friends into my life who um, who are going to like the real me. And I have to be brave enough to expose the real me. So that yeah. takes some courage. And, and I'm, I'm thinking, hmm, how do, I, how do I get strong enough and confident enough to try an experiment and say, all right, all y'all, this is who I am. Do you like it? Are you okay with that? Will you still be my friend? Because um, that sounds really scary. Yeah, it is absolutely scary. It's the it's it's our whole. I believe, Linda. This is. I'm so excited about this because I believe that it's our whole existence. We 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 live to just do this thing where we discover ourselves, and I I believe this self discovery is where you find that it's more about saying yes to me, putting these things into my boundaries, and realizing that. Saying yes to myself is all there is that I need to do. And then I can come to, then I can stand in front of people because I know that if they reject me, it is not about me. Because I know that when I say yes to myself, there are some things that don't belong. It has nothing to do with the other things. It has everything to do with me. So when somebody walks around and they reject me, they reject me. They'll say, well, good for them. They're saying yes to them, my, themselves. Good for them. Because I know what it feels like to say yes to myself. So it's like having that experience. And self-discovery is how you start saying yes to yourself. You try things and you log how you feel about those experiences. If you need them in your life, no one else in the world is ever going to be able to tell you that you don't need that in your life. You know this. It is yours, your decision, your feelings only. That's all that matters. If you never want to have this in your life, ever, 
then it is only you who can say that. It's only you who can dictate that. When you know that about yourself and you see other people walking around doing that, like, well, good for them. That's awesome. And But chances are, chances are, Linda, it's not like you said, yes, the universe will give you uh, what you're looking for. If you're doing that for yourself, people are going to respect the fact that you, you do that for yourself. You're going to attract people who are like you and saying yes to themselves. And it's easy. It's really easy to make a connection. These people are trustworthy because they're going to open up to you. They're not going to pretend to, to, to be someone that you think they want them to be. They're going to be honorable because they're going to say no. You're going to get the best version of yourself. They're going to say no when they don't feel like it. I mean, they're not going to lie to you. Um, you're going to get the best version of them because they will say that they want to be there and they, they will want to be, they will want to show up. They're not going to be shamed into doing things that they don't want to do. And this might very well include getting some new and different friends. That yes. might be part of the process. And it that's is. interesting. So as I'm listening, it sounds like, because I got to start somewhere. There, there's a lot of information and I got to start somewhere. And to me, the starting is not the experiment. The starting, as you mentioned, is I need to say yes to myself. Yes. And then I need to give permission to others to also say yes to themselves. Yes to me. Yes, this is who I am. Yes, this is what I like. Yes, this is whatever. And that's going to require some self-discovery, especially if you're used to being a chameleon and you may not actually know what you like and what you think because you're so programmed to try to search for what you think they want you to be. You know, it's like uh, that a runaway bride where um, Julie Roberts has this thing of where I don't know what eggs I like. I just like what everyone tells me to like. And you have to stop for a minute and say, okay, let me try this. What do I think? Let me try this. Yes. What do I think? What do I, let me try this. What do I think? Hey, I have an opinion. Hey, I have a preference. Yes to me. But I think it's, there's a bit of a process involved. And then once I'm comfortable and say, okay, this is who I am. I think it's pretty good. All right. I'm good with that. All right. Other people have the same right to say yes. Okay. Now I have some courage that when I do my experiment and I say, hey, this is who I am. These are the way I like my eggs or whatever the secret information is. Then they say, if they say no, then I can say, oh, good for you. I can see that you prefer this. That's great. And then if they say yes, it's like, really? We actually have something in common with the real yes. me. Yes, okay. that is that is so brilliant. Melinda, you are quite amazing. I am super <laughs> impressed and I, I can't hide it. <laughs> like they did give a whole lot of information and you made it very succinct and clear and understandable. And that is absolutely what I'm trying to say. That is absolutely it. Oh, thank you. All right. So I'm in a, a situation. And say maybe I'm a college student and I'm trying to meet some friends. I'm trying to do things. How do I present the real me? What's a good, some good conversation starters or, or what, what, how do I, how do I get started on this journey or, you know? Well, definitely what I do is, well, first it starts with me. So understanding what your preferences are, are super important. And I try to bring them into conversation slowly, but shortly. So I'd like to introduce maybe a little bit about the topic to understand what the other person may feel about it. So if it's something important to me, like a, a sports team and I'm a diehard sports fan and it's a deal breaker for me, I need you to like the Chicago Cubs. <laughs> and I, I like them on a level that is deeper than most people. I know the statistics and I know, I don't know all the, the players and their, their superstitions and everything like that. If I know that, I'm afraid if somebody, if I shared that with someone and they heard that, they're like, oh, you're a geek or you're weird or nobody ever does that. I'd want to slowly reveal it. I'd want to ask, well, do you like sports? Time sports. And realize how far the conversation can go. I like the Chicago Cubs and I fought. I was like, oh yeah, cool. I like, I like baseball. And I followed them for years upon years. I grew up with my dad watching the game with him and then they can share some more about them and start revealing a little more until I reach a point where I'm realizing that 
it's not as important to them as it is as it is to me. So if I start talking about statistics and they're like, oh well, you know, I'm really not quite into that so much. That's it. I don't need to reveal any more to them. I don't need to reveal any more because that's not going where I wanted to go. That's fine. That's fine. That's just a way to keep yourself a little more safe because you want to be brave and vulnerable, but you don't want to share everything all at once. It's overwhelming for them and it's exhausting for you to be so open. So just a little bit at a time. Think about the things that are important to you though. Think about the things that are deal breakers, their needs and your nevers. Those things are super important. So if it's a need for me to want to talk to someone about baseball and the stats, it's that important and super passionate about it. My relationship with this person I just met can only go so far and I realize it. it's okay. Okay. So I'm loving this. And as I'm listening to this, it's like, okay, so what super, super matters to me and just give a little bit at a time rather than mm -hmm. just going Bleh, and doing this social <laughs> vomit kind of a thing. And then, but I'm also thinking about how I also do not require a clone of myself in order to have a friend because there's only one me. I mean, that's going to have that exact same interests and the same whatever, but it's kind of like a, a Venn diagram where it's like the circles overlap and there's a spot where these two both match. And then that's the place that we can communicate with. And then the cool thing about that is I don't require a clone in order to have a friend. But like you mentioned, okay, so if I want to talk sports and I've got all oh, somebody who's just all in, or if I want to talk about movies or something, and maybe there's someone who, who has that in common with me. So it's not being a chameleon, it's genuine, genuine, but they're pieces of myself, but it's maybe not every single thing where everything that is interesting to me is going to be interesting to them and vice right. versa. Exactly, exactly. And where you make the closest friendships is what the overlap is between the things that are really super important to you. Excellent. Excellent. The deal breakers. There are yeah. some things that are really, really going to matter. And this is where we want to have that overlap. Oh, yes, absolutely. Okay. Love it. Love <laughs> it. Is there anything that you wanted to make sure that we cover today before we close? Well, yeah, you know, actually, as you said that, I was thinking about the, the connection with people and others. And what we really want is to be understood more than anything. And it's not just the debt the un that we want to be understood, but it's also the demonstration that we understand. That's what makes us feel safe. So let's say I just blurted out the fact that I'm all about stats and I start throwing a match like blah, 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 and stats. And you're just like stunned, you're stunned. That's your feeling, you're stunned. But if you can put that feeling aside and start focusing on what's happening with me, spending all this I'm super excited. I'm excited. And if you can reflect that feeling back to me, you can make a connection that way too. Like, oh yeah, that's cool. Exciting. Really. I don't know anything about stats. You're, that'd be you. Like not knowing anything about what's going on at the baseball, but you're, you're throwing back my excitement. We are instantly going to be connected right there in that moment. So this is your opportunity to share with them. Though, if you ever run into an opportunity, if you ever run into a situation in which someone is sharing so much with you. They're throwing all this energy at you because they didn't notice. But this isn't the time to reflect to them how, the, how you're feeling or how, how they're feeling back to them so that they feel understood. And then you can share your side. I don't recommend that you share your side before making sure this other person is heard. If you have the skill to do so, if you have the ability to recognize that they're super excited. I'm going to reflect back their excitement and then I'm going to share how I really feel about this so that they can understand me. That will make the connection. Okay. So in order to continue this friendship, you're blurting out your stats. Uh, my mind is going fuzz, fuzz, fuzz. Yeah. And, but I can see that you're excited. So rather than just shutting you down and saying, boring, yuck, I'm going to say, wow, I can tell that you are really excited and passionate about this. That is so awesome. You know, I don't know anything about stats and that doesn't really interest me, but I am so glad that you're excited and that you love it. And I can tell that you love it. And then maybe that can give enough social feedback to say, I care about you 
but I'm not super interested in stats. So let's go in a different direction. Would that be okay? I hope. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> Woo. Yes. All yes. right. Yes. Yeah, that, is, that is absolutely it. So lots of information there, but you have nailed it once again. Oh, thank you so much for all the wisdom you shared today. Friendships, feeling like you belong is one of our most basic needs. So isn't it marvelous to have someone who can coach and give some suggestions and say, hey, this is something that works and, um, and you can feel like you belong because that matters. So thank you so much for visiting with me today. Thank you for having me so much, Linda. I really appreciate it. Had a wonderful time here. It's been a pleasure. In closing, I'd like to share a quote by Helen Keller. She said, I would rather walk with a friend in the dark than alone in the light. Today, I invite you to improve your friendships by first becoming friends with yourself. See you next time on Linda's Corner. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode of Linda's Corner, please share and subscribe to help us reach new listeners. I also invite you to check out my nonprofit, Hope for Healing, at the website hopeforhealingfoundation.org for free ebooks and other free resources to help increase happiness, build confidence and self esteem, strengthen relationships, manage stress, and calm feelings of depression and anxiety. I also invite you to grab a copy of one of my books, like Crushed A Journey Through Depression, or Amazon bestseller You Got This, an action plan to calm fear, anxiety, worry, and stress. See you next time on Linda's Corner.